All right guys, today we are working on Ranger Green, the CX500 that I built about five years ago. And in this episode, what I'm doing is cleaning the carburetors, getting them reinstalled, doing a, a synchronization on them, and then overall just kind of taking it for a test ride and making sure this thing is running how it should. Now, if you guys have not seen the previous episode, I went ahead and I removed the carburetors off this thing and took them apart. Found a lot of poor work that I did in the past. And in this episode, I go ahead and fix all of that. We get this thing up and going and go for a spin. So anyway, enjoy the video. All right, I've got these torn down as far as I want to go right now. So let's go ahead and dunk these things in the ultrasonic. I'll do an initial run of like 10 minutes, kind of see what they do to them. Then I'll try to work out these other jets here. So gonna remove the paint. It's gonna get these things nice and cleaned up though. And that's what we want. Now, whenever I do carburetors, I uh, I actually do not buy rebuild kits. I just simply cr clean the brass. So these things are pretty oxidized, they're pretty nasty looking. And the way I clean these is actually using muriatic acid. So the stuff's pretty nasty. You can put it in a sealed container like this. And for me, of course, I have the ultrasonic cleaner. So what I do is I put my brass inside this sealed container. I set this inside the ultrasonic. It stays sealed and isolated. And when it's in there, it's actually all, it's also being ultrasonically clean because it's just part of the solution in there, basically. So um, I'm going to drop these things in here, but you want to make sure you have gloves and a respirator. Now, muriatic acid will not hurt brass, so it'll be just fine. It'll clean it up nice, but don't put any aluminum in there because there won't be any to take back out. It'll dissolve into nothing. And then it, it should be safe on rubber. I've, I've had rubber pieces in here before, but I do try to avoid that. So uh, just kind of use it as you will, but you know, just know that it will rust any steel that's near. Usually I do this outside, but because I want to have the camera on it, we're going to do it like this. Now we've ran these for 15 minutes at about 30 degrees Celsius. So there is some paint starting to come off, which, you know, can't be surprised by. So I'm actually going to uh, just crank the heat in this thing. We'll get it up to about 50 degrees Celsius. And then uh, I'll run it for like another 15 and we will start just removing paint. Works out good that way. All right, I've had these things at 60 degrees Celsius. They've been cooking for a little bit. A lot less paint. I'm gonna get some gloves on and we'll start airing all this stuff off. Compressed air will get most of that paint off. We don't wanna let this chemical dry on here. It is relatively safe, but again, just good practice, not letting it dry. Now 
Now I know some of you guys are going to want uh, some important areas to focus on like forcing air through. So of course this jet right here, if you follow it, if you follow it down you can see that nozzle goes over here and then I'll show you on this side, comes out your air cutoff valve at that hole right there. So working chemical and compressed air between those two, that's how you can get that thing cleared out. You know, some of these other ones are pretty straightforward. You know, you can see straight through there. Of course, you want to clean out your uh, your mixture adjustment there. And then one other thing I'm going to do is polish up the actual needle seats. That's something I always do. So anywhere you see a uh, orifice, basically, you want to make sure you feed air through those things and just confirm that you're getting air out of the corresponding passage. And then, like your accelerator pump right here, tiny little jet up there or an, an orifice. And then the center area here, as well as this passage, those are connected. You want to make sure those are cleared out. Of course, you have that passage there that leads to there. Make sure that's good. Just anything you can find. You know, this stuff, this one's still a little dirty. I don't think I've touched it yet. But there to there, you want to make sure that's clean. Just clean everything. Spend a lot of time here. It's going to be very time consuming, but you can get it. All right, we have the carbs on the bench and I've spent probably five, six hours just cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. And I had, let me tell you, I had a lot of trouble removing one of these jets. And this one's, uh, this one's in good shape. But I had to basically, I had to destroy both of them. Um, I had tried to easy out one of them and then I had kind of drilled in a little bit too far and it it weakened it so the easy out went down too far and then cracked it in half which meant that I was just left with the threaded portion and really nothing to grab onto in the actual carburetor body so it took it took hours to just kind of take a, a piece of stainless filler rod you know like file an edge onto it and just kind of like tapping and trying to like get behind a thread and stuff and work that out it, it, it took a while but we got it, there's absolutely no damage to the carbs, they're looking great. And then I've just spent the extra time removing paint and just getting the uh, all of the passages clean, you know, whether it be feeding wire through it, you know, carburetor cleaner itself through the passages, as well as compressed air, of course. So everything is ready to go. Luckily, um, if you guys haven't seen, I recently bought like a crap ton of parts, big old parts hoard, I'll put a link above right now. but. Within that, I've got a ton of stuff. Um, so, like a bunch of K and L carburetor rebuild kits. Like these are specifically for like a '79 CB 750. But some of the parts, of course, interchange. The jetting is not quite correct. But the actual um, nozzles and stuff that I need, I do have. And then all of those O-rings that I was missing. How convenient! A K and L Kian O-ring assortment. So this one has all the goods in it so it's a very handy kit right here plus it has like all little shims and then the uh the washers for your mixture screws and stuff like that so stuff like that i really lucked out with that parts word because that is the stuff that i need so now it's time to assemble so some of the stuff we we're reusing such as our emulsion tube for this you know everything is is cleaned up I will likely kind of, I think I'm going to go ahead and keep the pilot jets in here. And then I will, I think I'm going to go ahead and step from a uh, 112. Let's see, what's the main? Main's a 112. I think I got some 118s in here. So I'll try those. It may need to go up a little bit higher, but uh, I am going to go ahead and just right off the rip, put some different mains in it. So as I mentioned, everything's cleaned up. It is time to finally assemble these things. Let me tell you, this thing's going to run a lot better.
Okay, right there we have the carburetors assembled and I need to paint them. So they're getting a little bit warmed up in the sun. I have them masked off the best I can without going too crazy with it. And we're going to paint them. Now, before anybody gets mad at me, how do you think they painted small block Chevys back in the day on the assembly line? They're all together. Hose them down, all right? That's what we're gonna do here. That's why the bowls are on it. And I'm not doing everything individually. We're just doing it like it would have been done on like an assembly line. Could it be done better? Sure, but this is better than I did it before. So I'm gonna use an SEM primer. And then the actual paint that I used in like 2016, I had bought so much. This is actually from when I bought the original stuff. So um, kind of how I came up with the color was painting the engine first and that was based off of just finding this Cummins beige the Duplicolor DE1638 so the powder coating on the bike is actually color matched to the paint that I used first so it was, it was just kind of fun coming up with that but this was I I wanted to do the engine in something that wasn't like black or bare aluminum colored or something like that so I came up with a beige and then matched like the greens to it and the thing kind of has that park ranger vibe just something completely different so i'm going to let those warm up a little bit further i'm going to get them a very light dusting of the primer we'll hit them with some paint and then i'm thinking tomorrow it's uh, right now it's friday for me tomorrow i should be able to get these things back on the bike we'll fire it up we should be uh, in a lot better shape but once I hit those with a coat of paint, I'll be uh, dancing between dry times and, and different coats. I have some other stuff to work on on the bike, and uh, it'll work out good. So, yeah, tune back in when it's done. And yes, of course, I've heard of like Cerakote and stuff like that. That's something I'll try in the future. But with this project, this is what we did in the past. That's what we're going to do again. So we're just going to get it done, get it out the door, and it'll be great.
All right, got the carburetors on this thing, the fuel tank's back on the seat, fuel line, and this thing is ready to uh, fire up. So let's see how good we did. Now again, to reiterate, we did a bench sink of the carburetors, and then of course I rebuilt them and cleaned them properly this time. So uh, I did also upgrade from a 112 to like a 118 main jet, and uh, we're not gonna know if that's even close until we get there. So as of now though, it is still the factory 78 pilot jet, and then everything else is basically uh, set to how it came. The uh, mixture screws, I have them at two turns out, I believe. And uh, originally, I'd, for some reason, I didn't put the metal washer in, in there, so the settings were not ideal because it was deforming the O-ring, so whatever. But I gave myself a base setting of two turns out. We'll see how that goes. Right now, there's no air filters on it. That's fine. We'll see how it acts. So uh, click the fuel on, twist the key, hit the button, Let's see if it goes. Remember, the right cylinder of this thing, whenever we looked at the carburetors on the bench, the right throttle blade was open a little bit more, so it was taking a larger gulp of air, so it was unsynchronized, and right now the idle seems a little low because we closed that side, so it's like, it's actually, it, I need to actually turn the idle up to readjust, so let's see how that does, because right now this thing's on full choke and it's still idling kind of low. guys have noticed but so far no cough so I just went around the block on this thing and I'm like oh it seems like it's oddly down on power I didn't put the the uh, air filters on so there's no vacuum to then help draw the slides up unless you went like really full throttle so that's why you know pod filter tuning is a, is a little bit difficult with CV carbs because they need the vacuum restriction of the air filter to then raise the slides. If they don't have any vacuum, you know, you're not really going to be getting any fuel. It's a tricky balance. If you ever like, you know, get something like this started and you go to take it down the street and it's just like, there's just nothing there, you need a good air filter. And what I normally see with like those cheap Amazon and eBay pods is that they'll have a, a huge overhang on the inside of the actual filter and it blocks the uh, the air jets or the air ports on the actual carburetor inlet and that'll cause some real funky, real funky stuff to go on. So it's all a balance, you know? And a lot of times those things will just be, like those cheap, those cheap filters just, they're just not good. There's really no restriction, no, no real filtering effect. They'll let large particles in. What I like about these filters or a foam filter in general is you can kind of tune them with the actual air filter oil. So, I mean, you're supposed to oil them anyway, but like you put kind of a heavy coat and uh, give it kind of a richer signal, so to speak, or more restriction. So, I don't know, just it's a, another interesting uh, tidbit of information for you guys. But let's go ahead and fire this thing back up and see how it acts. just at like just off idle very smooth much improved with both the filters and of course the uh, bench sink and no coughing of course responsive too I 
idle could be a little sharper. So far, very just smooth operation compared to maybe how it was. Again, no coughs or anything like that. Just, just smooth. straight ahead of us. Usually I try to wheelie up this thing on my KLR, but today we're not going to try that. The old CX is not quite built for wheelies. And where's my KLR, actually? But we make it happen on that. Overall, those things are cruising just, like, great. You could call it good from here, but one thing I will be curious of, uh, just because we bench think the carbs, Let's go ahead and hook some vacuum gauges to it and actually see how close we are. Be a good experiment. Alright, I'm ready to uh, start synchronizing this thing. So, got my auxiliary fuel tank here just running down to the carburetors. I have my vacuum gauges hooked up. Cylinder 1, 2 cylinder 1, cylinder 2, two cylinder 2. Now this is fit on a brass uh, threaded rod that threads into your intake manifold. That's a, a stock feature on a lot of bikes. Now, one complication, the mixture screw is really inaccessible. I mean, it's offset, you know, past the frame a little bit, but there's just no way to, to cleanly get to it. Because if you guys watched the last video, I just used a uh, open end wrench and a flat blade, but this is a tool I've made to actually do carburetor adjustments like this. So the way this works, I, uh, I welded up this uh, eight millimeter socket to this hollow tube. I just have a handle on here and then I have a really long, thin flat blade. This goes through, and then when you're on top the adjustment, you can actually loosen the lock nut, adjust the uh, the center screw, and then lock it down all without moving anything. And you can just make quick, you know, a quick adjustments. But we can't do it on this bike. But I wanted to show you guys this tool, kind of how how the idea is. All right, so I'm going to go fire the bike up, and whenever you're synchronizing carbs, you want to have this thing fully warmed up and all things check, which is why we've done the valve clearance. We have our cam chain adjusted and we have our clean air filters on here so everything is optimized and now we can synchronize.
So it's always a challenge to get these things to balance because you're always fighting tightening down that jam nut and I just don't have access to it with the right tool. So you got to do a bunch of trials and error, but right now we're well within our range. So we're good to go. All right, I think we got this thing dialed in. So I've got the uh, mixer screws kind of backed out there. Two and a quarter turns right now. And my throttle response. Throttle response, pretty good. trailer things with it. Also, it stormed and rained like crazy today. So we were definitely spinning up that. Take it through mud. I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy. Now I gotta clean this thing. So in general, it's just kind of hard not to like a Revy V twin. But this thing with the two and the one through that super trap sounds so good. Like, you know, it's like a sportster, as I always say. They're not fantastic at any one thing. They've got a cool character to them. They're just fun to ride. That's what it's about. I don't, I don't understand why people are like, oh man, it's not that fast, you know, or whatever. Like, I, yeah, there's, there's always something faster, you know. Like, nobody is buying a CX500 to literally be the fastest bike ever. And even on that note, Grandfather's Axe being that 650 swapped and like optimized for performance, it's fast, but any stock modern sport bike would mop the floor with that thing, you know? It's just about fun. That's what the concern should be. Is it fun? I think this is fun. That's going to do it for this one. Really had fun with this bike. I also have Grandfather's Axe all fixed up with the new clutch cable repair on that. So anyway, I'm going to bring these things back to the customer and he is going to enjoy them. But I would expect to maybe see this bike in the future for maybe more potential upgrades or changes or something like that. 
But in closing, hopefully you guys found this video and the one before it helpful, maybe inspiring, and uh, maybe just a good look at uh, how we all progress and do things. So you can always be improving, and we proved it on this bike. So anyway, again, hope you guys like this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.